After arriving at Cobalt Gorge last night, we treated ourselves to a great feed at the bar and a couple of beverages, then had a good night's sleep ready for the following day. We are up nice and early ready to do the tour and learn about its history and secrets, because these places always have a secret or two. It's a short 10 minute journey on the bus to the gorge itself where the real adventure starts. From learning about the early settlers like John Corbett, you are in awe of what they achieved given the climate and environment. Up into Queensland, uh, Mount Morgan, that direction, up into Cape River Diggings, then over here to the Gilbert, Gilberton Township or the Gilbert River Diggings, uh, a bit further over, about 80 k's away. Set up their business there, by this time he's married, couple of kids, things are going pretty good his way. Opened up three hotels along his travels. Uh, whether he sold them or whatever, don't know. Uh, but anyway, he's basically a public. He gets a bit of a notion that Normanton being the new town, it's going to fire up as well. So he decides to leave his brother in charge of his businesses back here in Gilberton. Heads to Normanton, gets over to Normanton, starts establishing a general store. Didn't open up a hotel, but just a general store. From there, he gets news that uh, the supplies for this general store aren't going to come. The ship's sunk, um, and so he thinks, oh, well, that's one bit of bad luck. Mm. Uh, then he's well, in the process, his wife is pregnant. She gives birth, but passes away about 12 days after. And so that leaves him now no wife, two young kids, and a baby. Cabal Gorge is on the property of Robin Hood Station, some 1,300 square kilometres of savanna land and cattle country. Yeah, just he was just in the water there. Be <coughs> around the stand. Yeah. Oh, All right, oh, yeah. On a standing oh. basis, we'll just find you one at a time. Mm -hmm. Okay. See James Clark's and Eddie Hill are hand yeah. scratching mm -hmm. over the rock. Oh, there you go. Nineteen hundred. Please, mate. He might get on the way back. Eddie's Sorry. still alive. Still kicking. He yeah. might get on the way back. Yeah. Yeah. The guys at the back are at the front on the way back, and the ones at the front are on the back of the way. Yeah. 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 Sandy oh, stuff. <laughs> I told you there was a secret or two. Due to its isolated location on the southwestern extremity of the station, meant this area was mostly left undisturbed. Those who did visit Cobalt Creek did not seem to venture beyond its junction with the Robinson River, as the sheer sandstone walls and the deep water formed a natural barrier. It wasn't until the early 1990s that Simon Terry and two friends made the effort to take a small boat to the mouth of the Cobalt Creek. They paddled up the creek and were amazed at what lay before them, the magnificent Cobalt Gorge. Fisher sometimes resides in the muddy ends. 
uh, but just fly through for curiosity. Uh, but that's about the only sort of birds we see. And you can see that skin breaks away. There's some new stuff underneath, and then that'll just immensely fall apart. When the scenery is right, go right in. I want to fall deep within. Don't leave me hanging just cause I'm too proud. Whisper away my outdated doubts. Somebody do me the courtesy. Dress me down. I'm not that old yet I'm far too young. Stand my ground But my ways are mine And I don't want to change Not even for love Now take back all them hard words I'm a grown woman With confidence and sense Apart from the good we return to the cabin for some deserved R&R. &R. They have great facilities here and it was a big tip for us. Today we leave the gorge and start our trek south. We travel through Forsyth, Ainsley and then turn right onto the Gregory Development Road which will take us through to Charters Towers. We have a small restocking session to do there, then onto the Burdick and Dam campsite for the night. Try it later. We had a bit of a scout around and set up camp. We wanted to get away early in the morning, so we went for a drive in and around the dam to check it out.
Here's a tip for would-be filmmakers or content creators. If you're going to take footage through the windscreen, make sure you can see through it first. The Burdekin Falls Dam is a concrete gravity dam with an uncontrolled spillway across the Burdekin River. It's located southwest of Eyre and Home Hill in North Queensland. It was built for the purpose of irrigation and its reservoir is called Lake Darimple. Water from the reservoir is also used to replenish downstream aquifers. Fishing is allowed, but a stocked empowerment permit is required, as barramundi are stocked regularly. Other fish present include archerfish, sooty grunter, golden and silver perch. We feel so blessed to be able to enjoy some of the sights and sounds of the outback, from savannah bushlands, rolling hills, and the opportunity each night to sit and soak up the awe-inspiring sunsets. The Burdekin Dam has not disappointed, as this one is no exception. You tell me. Woken this morning after an extremely damp night. Holy dewy, the dews formed. And now, look at this, we've got the fog rolling up over the top of the hill. So we get to pack up everything wet, but we'll get an opportunity this afternoon to set it all up and dry it out.
This looks like a nice little spot for lunch and somewhere to stretch the legs. The 1956 Olympic torch relay commenced in Cairns on the 9th of November 1956. The runners battled amongst other things hail, flooded rivers and bulldust tracks. It was imperative to keep to the very strict timetable. Due to heavy rain in the St Lawrence region, the original route, Serena, St. Lawrence, Marlborough, was changed to Serena, Croydon, Marlborough, adding another 36 kilometres to the section. However, such was the timetable that no additional time was available to complete the section. Thus, the runners were told to run a little faster. This they did, and by the time the Olympic torch reached Marlborough, it was back on schedule. After a night in the cabin in Rocky, today we headed out to the Byfield National Park. We sneak into the Red Rock camping ground to have a look around. It has some nice grassed areas with clean, well looked after amenities.
You can understand why this place becomes inaccessible after heavy rain. Ah, that's the sign we were looking for. Wow, is this stuff soft? I had made the beginner mistake and not let enough air out of the tyres. Continuing on had buried the poor Prado down to its diffs, so we had to dig, let some more air out and reposition the Mac tracks for another attempt. Next time on Overland Adventures, we find these red-tailed black cockatoos showcasing the vista. Camp all set up, we had the whole place to ourselves. Great place to check out the shells. And we get to see some whale watching, even if they were a bit far away. <laughs>